Good morning, Connections. We begin another week. If you were with us on Sunday, we started talking about faith, the importance of faith, the importance of sustaining faith for a lifetime, not just for a smaller period of time. And that is a challenge. And we emphasized on Sunday that it's a challenge that if we go to God's word, we see that many have fallen. Many have failed to sustain faith for a lifetime. So the author of Hebrews in the New Testament sets out to encourage and to give us counsel on how to sustain faith, not just for a short period of time, but for the the long race ahead. And that's where we're going to continue to explore this week. Now, perhaps you have experienced this yourself, or perhaps you've read in God's Word how difficult this is. Sustaining belief, which is what faith is. Faith is believing that we are being written into God's story, that he is the creator of all things. That is what faith is. Faith is something that will never be proven to beyond doubt. Faith is God speaking into our hearts and saying, trust me. And we may trust God in a certain circumstance, but a new problem comes on the scene and we have to work through it all over again. Now, The thing about faith is the more problems we face, the more trials we face, the more times we choose to trust God, the more likely we are to turn to it in times of need. I trusted God last time, he came through. I trusted God the time before that, and he came through. But we are all susceptible to allowing doubt to creep in, allowing the noise from the world to creep in, allow us to to perhaps turn our eyes away from, from God and seek other resolution, seek other answers. That's what happened to the Israelites in the Old Testament. And this particular letter being written to the Hebrews is a caution to those that are living just after Jesus' death. Those who have come alive with the gospel message and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but now they're falling back into the patterns that we witness in the Old Testament. Faith is diminishing, passion and a, a desire to pursue God are already starting to wane. So the author of Hebrews, we're going to start here in chapter 2, much of what is spoken is a word of encouragement to recognize who God is, to recognize what salvation is, to recognize what has been given to us that has such tremendous value that we tend to overlook or tend to, to dismiss. That's where we start today. Hebrews 2 Verse 10, God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. As we've mentioned many times before, we are chosen by God. We don't earn our salvation. We don't earn our place in the family. God, who desires to have many children, chose you. Chose you to live with him for eternity. And the instrument that he has used to bring us into the family is that perfect sacrifice his own son, Jesus. 
So now Jesus and the one he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brother and sisters. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. Just rest in that today. That God had a plan from the very beginning. You are being written into the story, but you are not just being written into God's story as a bit player. You are being written into God's story as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, sons and daughters of the God Most High. That is a place of privilege. That's a place of honor. That's a place of responsibility but one that we should wrap our arms around fully and be grateful for. On days when we are struggling, on days when nothing seems to be going right, when we are facing off against opposition, one of the most powerful things that we can bring to the fore is, devil, you have no place here. I am a son. I am a daughter of the God Most High, and you have no room. Invoking God's power, invoking your rights as a child of God to stand firm in the face of opposition or any struggle that we're walking through. That is the power that will sustain us, not just for this momentary lift that faith brings us, but for a lifetime of faith that demonstrates God's power and love to all who are observing us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for taking you for granted. Forgive us, Lord, for getting what we considered long down the road and allowing our, our passion to diminish as we begin inviting other distractions into our lives that only muddy the waters and we lose our confidence. You have a better plan, you have a better way. And that's a call to keep our eyes fixed upon you, to invite you into every conversation, to invite you into every word that we share. Help us to do better, reignite the flame, reignite our hearts, Lord. We thank, we're thankful for all those that came before and carried the torch so that we might receive salvation. Now it is our turn. We want to finish strong, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're going to work our way through Hebrews. We spent most of our time on Sunday on Hebrews 10, 11, 12. We're going to pick up um, the verses before that uh, this week. And there's a powerful one that we're going to end on on Friday that really has helped uh, get me in the proper frame of mind. And I hope it'll do the same for you. I love you. I miss you. See you back here tomorrow. Till then be good.